Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today for the fifth episode of our Pokemon Emerald Random Card Challenge. Last time out, we earned our sixth gym badge against Winona in Fortree City. The battle left the Fortree gym in ruin, but that's behind us now, so let's get back to it in Lily Cove City. Starting off this episode is the final rival battle against May. It's not mandatory, but it's the final time we can take her on, so we may as well do it. The last time she really challenged us was in the first battle of the series, but this is her last chance, so maybe she'll try a bit harder. We're gonna need a team of four for the final rival face-off, so let's draw some cards. Alright, we're gonna be using Electabuzz, Diglett, Charmeleon, and Spiro. so pretty decent draw. Not only do we have a couple of strong team members, but with Electric, Fire, and Ground, we've got some really good type matchups for May's final team. We should have stab super effective moves against our whole team here, so I'm not expecting too much trouble. Let's have a look at the movesets. Claw the Charmeleon's up first and at level 32, he's got Ember, Growl, Smokescreen, and Rage. Tiller the Diglett's up next, also at 32, and his moveset's made up of Magnitude, Growl, Mudslap, and Dig. Lecter the Electabuzz is level lower at 31, with the moves Thunder Punch, Leer, Light Screen, and Swift. Finally, we've got Lanza the Spiro, who's our highest level Pokemon at 34, and he's equipped with Aerial Ace, Leer, Pursuit, and Fury Attack. I really didn't put much work into these movesets because I wanted to save any good TMs, and this one feels like it'll be pretty simple. Let's get into it. For her final appearance, May leads off with her Tropius, and we send out Charmeleon. If we'd drawn Charmeleon last instead of third, then he'd be at 34 with Flamethrower, but as things stand, we're stuck with just Ember. The weak Fire-type move doesn't actually deal much damage despite it being super effective, so Tropius can land a Stomp. Still, Claw's second spit of Ember results in a critical hit that burns up the Tree Bird, handing us a very early lead. May does have a Water-type in her party, but she decides to call on Slugma next because I guess deep down she knows she's not winning here. We recall Charmeleon and send out Diglett because we want to use our whole team. This one shouldn't be too hard. May calls for Harden in her free turn, so we go for Magnitude. Tiller doesn't go too crazy with it, just hitting for a standard Magnitude 7, which Slugma lives through, but May's really lacking motivation here. She instructs Slugma to use Amnesia because... I don't know, I guess she's setting up to sweep or something? Diglett's unimpressed and uninspired, so Magnitude only hits for 50 base power, but that's enough. Slugma faints, and without making any real impact, half of May's team is down. She calls on Grovile next, and we make another switch out to Spiro. This time around, our rival goes for an attack on her turn in hand, with Grovile striking Lanza with Leaf Blade. It's not very effective, but that hardly matters when she uses the close proximity to attack again, this time scoring a critical hit. Spiro's knocked out before even having a chance to attack, so maybe I was being a bit harsh on May a minute ago. We're still in control and go back out to Charmeleon, who should be able to take care of Grovile. Claw isn't fast enough to land the first attack, so he's struck by Leaf Blade, but does counter well with Ember to weaken Grovile. They exchange attacks once more, which leaves the Grass-type on the brink of fainting. One last gasp of attack takes Charmeleon deep into Red Health, but it just comes up short. Ember connects once more, finishing off May's starter and leaving her with only one. Pelipper's the only Pokemon still standing for May, and that's really not a great matchup for our final team member. We call on Electabuzz last, who's unaffected by a wing attack before swinging wildly at Pelipper with Thunder Punch. May just calls for Protect in time to stop it as the barrier shatters in front of Pelipper's eyes. We both shout for the same moves again, which means Lecter gets to crush another protective barrier. Pelipper is using up all of her energy just to avoid the hits, though. There's nothing left to protect her when Electabuzz charges up a third Thunder Punch. Lecter's fist lands just below Pelipper's eye, sending a shockwave coursing through the quad-weak water bird. It's more than enough for a one-shot, and that's the end of May. Across five battles, she did pick up more wins, but that's largely down to the difficulties that come with attempting to take down a Trico with a Caterpie. That's the last we'll see of May, though, so let's all appreciate her peak, when she only had one level 5 Trico. It really was all downhill from there. Our next stop is Moss Deep City to take on Tate and Liza for our seventh gym badge. It'll be a double battle, and across all the games, Tate and Liza's gym is one of the only ones where there's actually a solid strategy in place. We'll need a team of four, and it's gonna have to be a pretty good one. Let's draw some cards. Okay, against Tate and Liza, we'll be using the team of Stantler, Dragonair, Wartortle, and Grimer. That's okay, it's basically a team of three because Grimer will be immediately annihilated in one hit by any of Tate and Liza's Pokemon. Stantler, Dragonair, and Wartortle can all play a part, though. Let's have a look at the team. Prancer the Stantlers at level 41 with the moves Astonish, Hypnosis, Sand Attack, and Stomp. We do have the TM for Shadow Ball, but I'd like to save that for later if possible. Galapagos the War Turtle's up next at level 42, and his moveset's made up of Surf, Withdraw, Rapid Spin, and Bite. 
We've got a couple of super effective options there, so Wartortle will be key here. Rhea the Dragonair is on par with Stantler at 41, and she's got Surf, Thunder Wave, Agility, and Dragon Rage. Finally, we've got Palu the Grimer at level 42, and Sludge, Screech, Minimize, and Acid Armor are the four moves that she probably won't have a chance to use. This one's going to be tough. Let's get into it. Tate and Liza kick things off with Zatu and Claydol, and we lead off with Stantler and Wartortle. Everything actually starts out okay with Intimidate lowering the attack of both of the gym leader's Pokemon and Hypnosis putting Claydol to sleep. After a bit of damage from Surf, Prancer uses Hypnosis on Zatu too. Sunny Day has weakened Surf considerably at this point, and Claydol wakes up to attack Wartortle with Psychic. Astonish and Bite leave Zatu weak, but the Psychic Flying type also wakes up and another Psychic takes down Galapagos. That's a little bit problematic. We call on Dragonair next, but Stantler misses with Hypnosis, which means we're probably in trouble. Claydol's Earthquake hurts both Prancer and Rhea, and then Zatu finishes off the Dragon type with yet another Psychic. We bring in Grimer as a last resort, but I'm really not confident anymore. Stantler puts Claydol back to sleep before Zatu one-shots Palu, leaving us in a 1 on 4. Prancer does close that gap a little, taking down Zatu with Astonish, so at least we took down one Pokemon. When Lunatone comes in, Stantler actually keeps us in the battle for a surprisingly long time, but eventually the disadvantage catches up with him. Astonish and Hypnosis almost wipe out Claydol too, but Tate and Liza use a Hyper Potion to ruin our chances. That really didn't go too well. Before attempting the battle again, we taught Shadow Ball to Stantler in place of Astonish. That should really increase the damage we can deal, so hopefully that'll make the difference. Let's give it a go. The battle actually starts out worse than the first run through with a miss on Hypnosis and Sunny Day immediately weakening Surf. Thanks to Claydol sleeping and Tate and Liza's unwillingness to attack though, Prancer is able to knock out Zatu with Shadow Ball. Solrock is sent in and Wartortle just straight up decides to bite the Sunrock. A healthy practice if ever I've seen one. The duos go back and forth with Shadow Ball and Surf eventually combining to wipe out Solrock so we're already doing better than our first attempt. Tate and Liza send in Lunatone and after Prancer misses Hypnosis, Claydol finishes him off with a Psychic. We call on Grimer next as a stopgap as Wartortle's HP is reduced to almost zero by Lunatone. Surviving the hit allows a Surf to wash away Claydol, leaving the sibling leaders with only one. Lunatone's Psychic blows away Palu, taking us down to just Dragonair and Wartortle, but that doesn't last long either. Rhea's Surf leaves Lunatone in red health before Galapagos is finished off by another Psychic. Dragonair is now in a one-on-one -on -one against Lunatone, and for some reason Tate and Liza don't use their Hyper Potion. Rhea sends a Surf crashing into the Moonrock, scoring the knockout and handing us the win over the Moss Deep Gym Leaders. That took a few attempts, but went surprisingly well in the end. The Mind Badge makes 7 and now we're only 1 away from qualifying for the Pokemon League. Before leaving Moss Deep City, we've got another double battle in front of us, but this time we've actually got a partner. We'll be teaming up with Steven Stone to take on the two top dogs from Team Magma, Maxi and Tabitha. They're sort of on the verge of destroying the entirety of Hoenn, so we may as well stop them. As Steven will be matching Maxi's levels, we'll have to match Tabitha's, so we'll be relying on our companion here. Alright, we need to draw three cards for this one, and it looks like we'll be using Volpix, Mew, that helps, and Staryu. We've actually got some decent type matchups here to take on a team featuring two camera ups, a Golbat and a Crobat. I really feel like we could have saved Mew for later because Steven may have enough to carry us here, but with the addition of the mythical Pokemon, I'm pretty sure we've got this one in the bag. Let's have a look at our movesets. Mozilla the Vulpix is at level 36, with the moves Flamethrower, Safeguard, Confuse Ray, and Will-O-Wisp. This is the ideal scenario where we've managed to actually get some good moves without the use of TMs. Our second Pokemon is Rubutu the Mew, who's at level 38 with the moves Surf, Transform, Metronome, and Mega Punch. That's not too great, but Surf should help out a lot in the double battle format. Last up we've got Arcturus the Staryu, who's our highest leveled Pokemon at level 40, and its moveset is made up of Surf, Camouflage, Recover, and Light Screen. I feel like we've got this one. Steven's trio for this one will be made up of Metang, Skarmory, and Agron. Alright, let's get into it. Maxi and Tabitha lead off with Camera up to Mydiana, and we start off with Volpix and Metang on our side. I'm gonna be honest with you, Mozilla contributed absolutely nothing here. Mydiana confused Volpix with Swagger, and all he accomplished was hitting himself in confusion. Metang actually knocks out Tabitha's Camera up while confused, so as expected, Steven is doing all of the work so far. After Mozilla faints, we call on Mew next, even though Team Magma has a couple of Mightyena out on the field. 
I felt like saving Staryu for Maxi's camera, so we only had one option left here. Rubutu Sir finishes off Tabitha's Mightyena, so she sends in Golbat next, who's immediately blasted by a powered up Metal Claw from Metang. Mew summons another Crashing Wave that slams into Golbat, taking Tabitha out of the battle completely. Now Maxi's on his own, and there are still five Pokemon standing on our side. After a couple of turns, we recall Rubutu and send in Staryu so that our entire trio can get into the battle. Arcturus makes extremely quick work of Mightyena, so Maxi sends in Crobat, which is a pretty perfect matchup for Metang. For some reason, Steven decides not to call for Psychic, which means Crobat's able to strike Arcturus with Wing Attack, knocking out the Starfish and leaving us with only one. After letting Staryu faint, Metang is happy to finish off Maxi's Crobat, so now only Camerupt remains. Mew washes away the quad weak fire ground type with Surf, so even though we finished the battle with just Rubutu, it was never that close. Steven still had his entire team and barely lost a single hit point. That's all we've got to do in Moss Deep City, so next time we'll be going off to that final gym badge in Sutopolis. If all goes to plan, we should be doing everything we need to set up for the Pokemon League in the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.